Good morning, Benji kids. So good to have you join us for our online Bible story today. We hope you're staying healthy and well wherever you are and whatever you're up to these days. This week, our story involves a man named King David, who was one of God's chosen people. And God watched over David as he grew and as he became king. And David grew in power and wealth, and he built himself a nice big house. But he thought if he built a house so nice for himself, maybe he should pay God back. You know, build God a house that was just as nice. Now that seems like a strange reaction, doesn't it? To build a house for God? What kind of house would God live in? Well, let's listen in and hear this story, and maybe we'll get a few clues as to where God lives. Once upon a time, there was a good king named David. He ruled over God's people, the Israelites. King David had built a house. No, not that kind of house. David built a big house, a mighty palace. It took him a long time to build it. It had all sorts of big fancy rooms, bedrooms and bathrooms, and rooms to just hang out in. Rooms made of gold and rooms that were like 20 feet high. When his house was all finished, David thought he'd relax, and so he chilled out in his house. That's the life, isn't it? But David started getting caught up in his thoughts. You see, while he was building his big palace, the whole time his people were carrying around this special God box called the Ark of the Covenant. And inside the Ark were the special Ten Commandments, or the Ten laws that God had given to the people, rules to live by. And wherever that God box called the Ark was placed, that was kind of where people thought God lived. And right then, while David was living in his huge palace, the God box was hanging out in this poor little tent. That seemed like a lame place for God to live, and especially when David had this awesome house to live in. So David had this great idea. He was going to build God a house. No, not that kind of house. Another big house called a temple. It would be a special place where people could go and worship God and where the Ark of the Covenant, that special God box, could be placed. And this house would be at least as good as David's. It would be made with big stone pillars and lots of gold all over the place, a fancy palace for God. Well, God heard what David was doing, and God kind of laughed a bit. Isn't that cute, he thought. David is trying to build a house for me, the maker of the whole world. As if I could be contained in a building. Now that's funny. God sent a pastor named Nathan to visit David and to speak for God, saying, Um, look, David, are you going to build God a house? No. Has God ever asked for that? While God was with you, loving you and caring for all the Israelites, did God ever say, you know, David, I'd like a big temple that will make others jealous? No. You can't keep me in a building. I'm here and here and here and here and here. God is everywhere, meeting you and loving you wherever you are. No, I'm going to build you a house. And more than a house, I'm going to give you a big family with lots of kids and lots more kids. And I'm going to bless your kids and grandkids and great grandkids and so on. And you will bless the world with your big family. Wherever you go, I will be there because I'm everywhere. David realized what a silly thing it was to assume that he could build a house good enough for God. David laughed a little to himself. He thanked God for what God had done for him, and he dedicated the rest of his life to loving and worshiping God wherever God was. You know, this story of David gets me thinking about the things we try to do for God. You know how God has blessed us with many gifts in our lives, family and friends and food and clean drinking water and clothing and toys, even houses to live in. And sometimes we think we should give thanks to God or give something back to God, and that's a good thing to do. We should 
give thanks to God. And we can give thanks to God by worshiping God in a church service, or we can give thanks to God by saying a prayer, or we can give thanks to God by caring for other people, and we should do all those things. But David's mistake was thinking that God was limited to that little God box, you know, that Ark of the Covenant. And David's mistake was thinking that somehow the only way to thank God or to worship God would be in a big church building or a house he built for God. We know better, don't we? We know God isn't just in one place or in some kind of God box or in one church building. God is everywhere, and knowing this reminds us that we can talk to God and thank God from wherever we are. This week, I want you to think about the places God just might show up in your life and I want you to think about the many ways God cares for you. Has God given you food to eat today? Or a warm house to live in? Or a good mom or dad? Or maybe a brother or a sister? Or maybe God has given you some cool toys to play with or a favorite TV show to watch. Maybe if you say your prayers at bedtime tonight with your parents, you can take a minute to stop and say, Hey, thanks for all those things, God. And then maybe you can talk with your family about how you can share some of the blessings you have and the way that God has blessed you by blessing others. And maybe those others can then say, hey, thanks for all these things, God. Why don't we say a prayer? Thank you, God, for blessing us. Help us to use our blessings to bless others so that all of us can say, thank you, God. Amen, 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 amen. I hope you have a good week, and thanks for tuning in.